Hello, everyone. I might adjust this a little bit. <clears throat> Welcome back to I Know My Nation. Thank you for participating in this lesson today. It's been a few weeks since I've seen you. And last week, Mr. Jones added in his work with our book that we have. Okay, um, <clears throat> this is the book that you need. Yours that could be a different color. You might have one of the blue books or the white books, or you might have red as mine is. I know my nation. Your name is at the top of the front cover. Now, when I was here last, I showed you how we put the pages in, and we put a rectangle shape around the outside, a big X in the middle, and then use glue to do that. Mr. Jones followed through with coloring the oceans blue, map colors, water is blue, and land is green. He did a page numeral at the bottom of that page. Thanks, Mr. Jones. <clears throat> Last week, he added this page, which he put page three on, and he gave page number to page two. I did not do page numbers when, we were, when I was here last. And then he highlighted this symbol for the Duwamish people, the first peoples of the area in which we live today. <clears throat> On these pages are the names of other local tribes of first peoples or Native Americans. And I'm going to read them to you today. <clears throat> and then we'll need this page because this will be the third page in our series of three sheets of paper showing symbols used by those tribes or groups of people to identify themselves that were taken from the internet from their websites. The groups that we've um, added to our book already are the Duwamish, Snoqualmie, Puyallup, Tulalip, Nisqually, Yakima, Quinault, and Suquamish. We have four more to add on to here. But let's read those again and please say it with me or after me to learn those names and begin to have them in your head and heart. Duwamish, Snoqualmie, Puyallup, Tulalip, Nisqually, Yakima, Quinault, Suquamish. Now, if you travel around the state or listen to the news or listen to people talk about parts of the state, many of these, these places are, uh, in, addition, in addition to being the names of the people, um, the area where those people lived, and some still live, are names of places in our state. The Duwamish River goes right in the area of Seattle, where Seattle was founded, and Seattle became the city of Seattle, named after Chief Self. <clears throat> Duwamish are the people closest to the core of Seattle that we know. Snoqualmie is an area outside of Seattle. There's a place called Snoqualmie Falls, that some people go to to look at the beautiful falls uh, at that area of the city. It's only about half an hour away from, from downtown Seattle. Puyallup is a tribe of people and an area of, the, of Washington just south of Seattle. Tulalip, the name of the tribe and an area of Seattle north. Nisqually is a really big, beautiful delta south of Seattle, closer to Olympia, if you've heard of Olympia before. Yakima is an area and, the, and people that is in eastern Washington. Quinault is an area on the um, Olympic Peninsula. There's a, a, a lodge and a lake there, Quinault. Suquamish is an area uh, also on the Olympic Peninsula um, near the area of Paulsbo, if you've been around that area. Now, as I turn this page, page three, I'm careful not to turn too many pages, but to just turn one page, the back of page three is going to be page four. If you would please, on this page, get my things ready, if the first thing you would do is please get a crayon 
or marker. And one of the ways we keep track of what we are doing with our gluing is take a pencil, marker, or crayon and make a big rectangle and then a big X. That's a way of guiding you of putting just the right amount of glue on a piece of paper. Some people use too much glue. Sorry, I'm going to make this with two hands. I'm going to turn my glue up just a little bit. I don't need it to go way away from the holder. Some people cover the whole paper with glue. That's not needed. It's a waste of the tool. You just need enough glue now to go right on the lines of that big rectangle and then right on the big X in the middle. That's plenty of glue. Now I'll close this over because I don't need it right now. And I'll cover it, but I won't put it far away because we'll need this in a few moments. Okay, then I'm taking my paper. So I'm right on the back of page three. And now I'm putting this paper right inside. I'm pressing it down. And you do that. I'm going to press that right here. Rubbing it while I slowly count to ten. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. I'll hold that up so I can show you what I'm doing. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. And my paper's in the book. Something we recommend for everyone is to write your name in pencil at the top of this. That way, when you're in class, if this page ever falls out, we can give it right back to you when we find it on the floor. Then, of course, at the bottom of this page, we need to write a new rule four. What I usually do for page numbers is to put a period, a small dot after that, or a circle. That way it lets people know we're not counting things on this page. If someone sees seven things and they say, why did they write four? That just shows it's a page number. On this page are four more tribes local to Washington State. Macaw, Lummi, Willapa, and Chinook. When I say them again this time, like you to repeat them. Macaw, Lummi, Willapa, and Chinook. And those are areas also of the state that you sometimes will hear people talk about. Lummi Island, Willapa is a community, Macaw is an area of northwest Washington, and Chinook is both an area, a river, and a type of salmon. At the bottom of this page, I put a map that shows where the primary and largest tribes, first peoples, Native Americans, live in what is now Washington State. Something to look at. See if you can match the names from these three pages, pages two, three, and four, and see if you can find where those names match on the map right here. <clears throat> now, Paying attention particularly to the imagery in the Chinook picture right here will be important, as will the artwork in the Nisqually image, as will the artwork in the Puyallup image. I'm going to ask you to put a small you can pick the color, crayon or marker. I'm going to use, I think, brown. <clears throat> this week we begin our next new program called My World and I. And I'm leaving that on Thursday, and then each teacher similarly will come in with a lesson around um, the uh, work that we'll be doing, and between the nation work and the um, My World and I work, we'll be looking at some First Peoples art of the Northwest Coast. And if you put a very small check, very small check in the Puyallup box, 
That's a type of design we'll be looking at later. And it's good to notice this type of design now. When you turn to this page, the Nisqually art at the top, if you put a small check in that box, that will help you notice that art because that's the type of art you will be looking at when we study Northwest Coast art. And then on page four, I need to circle numbers two and three. I just circled numbers two and three. And then on page four, the art that is by the Chinook image, if you put a small check in that box, that's going to help you notice that art, which will make it easier to identify color and enjoy when we get to that art in the My World and I section coming up. Okay, that is the work on those pages. Now, on <clears throat> the next page, get this ready. Oh. On this page right here, after number four comes number five. Over on this page, we're going to glue this page. It's a map of the states in the United States of America. The nation was originally land owned and lived in by the First Peoples. Many, many tribes throughout the United States lived in the area that we now call the United States that they call, had different names for. They were here first, and they were here for thousands of years. Then people with my skin color, white people, came into the United States, took over some of those lands, and then more of those lands, and all of those lands, and moved people around, mostly against their wishes. <clears throat> what became the United States was the land lived in by these peoples. That as we look through the history of the United States, many things happened. Some things we'll be telling and highlighting and pointing out to you, and many more things that we do not have time for. But the next place is to look at what became the land they knew to the land we call the United States. We'll take a look at the physical land as well as the, what's called the political map, that shows the differences in the states. So on this page, which is next in your stack, would you please, to get ready to glue it, and in doing that, we're going to make that big box around the outside of the back of the paper, with the big X in the middle, and opening up my glue stick, and rolling out just a little bit. Not too much, because sometimes it falls off and gets wasted. And then I'm going to use my glue around the outside box. And then that big X in the middle. Roll my glue down. Cover my glue stick. And then... Take care of all this here. Trying to hold it up. And then <clears throat> uh, I need to turn my paper sideways because this paper goes in sideways. And then I'm going to put this paper right here and then press down. Okay, well, do that on the table. I'm going to press down along the edges and in the big X in the middle while I slowly count to 10. One, two, Three, four, five, pressing down, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. On this page, at the bottom, I'm writing the numeral five. Four was the last page we did. Yes. I'm going to write five down here. I'm going to put a circle around it so people know I'm not counting states. I didn't make a mistake and only count five. And at the top, with pencil, please write your name. Again, 
So when we're in class, if that were to fall out of your book, we'd be able to read your name and give it to you. Now on this map, something we make is what's called a compass rose. And that's where we show the directions, north, south, east, west. With a marker, you pick the color. Over here, this is a big empty space, we can do it up here. Would you please make a medium line? You need space at the top and space at the bottom. That direction is called north. And for us, as English speakers, north, that starts with the letter N. So at the top of that line, we're going to make an N for north. The opposite of north, then would be at the bottom of that line, is south. In English, that letter would be S for South. That's the beginning of what's called the compass rose. That shows the direction of the map. Cartographers, new word, cartographer, 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 press it so it sticks, are map makers. And map makers always include a compass rose. On the maps we usually give you in our books, for I Know My Nation and My World and I, we leave the compass rose off so we can make it, which helps us learn those directions. Across the middle of that line, now you're going to make a horizontal line. The main four directions are north, south, hmm, hmm. There's two more direction words that maybe you've heard of. East, you heard of that word, east? East, the letter says its name right at the beginning, E. Let's put an E over here by this side. E for east, north, south, east, west. W comes over on this side. West, north, south, east, west. Now we have those four directions to help us see that north, this is the north part of the country. South, this is the south part of the country. E, east, this is the east part of the country. And w, west, this is the west part of the country. We live on the west coast, which means we are near the water. The west coast are the states Washington, Oregon, and California. The West also includes states like Wyoming and Arizona and Utah. Those are in the West along with others, but we are on the coast. Our state is here at the top. We are the Northwest Coast. Now what I'd like you to take is get a, a green, dark green crayon. <clears throat> Washington has a nickname. Its nickname is the Evergreen State because much of the state is full of trees, a type of tree called evergreen, ever, which means it's green all the time. Different from deciduous trees, deciduous trees, deciduous trees, whose leaves fall off the trees. Evergreen trees keep their green color all year. So right up here, would you please Color that state in, right at the top, green. I'm going to put my paper down so I can color it a little bit better. I'd like you to do that as well. Color that in. During this year, we'll learn about Washington State a lot because it's the state we live in. But we'll also learn about the rest of our country. That's why this is called I Know My Nation. And we also learn about our world my world and I. So your map would look like that because you've colored in Washington. Over time, teachers will point out states, their locations and shapes, and give them different colors, just so you can no begin to identify shapes of states when you see them. Particularly in the weeks ahead, there'll be lots of maps you'll see on TV or on computer screens 
because of the election day coming. And there'll be lots of talk about the states and how the states are voting or polling, which is ways that people look and think about election. And so we'll be looking at states in here that will be important ones for us. Important states like Alaska, Texas, New York, Florida, Ohio, important states in our nation. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the page after that one, I'm going to glue one more page in today. I'm going to turn page five to the back of it. I'm, I'm not skipping a page. I'm coming right over here. And on the back of that page, I'm gluing the next page in your stack that looks like this. As we learn about our nation, we'll also begin to learn and identify famous symbols or icons that represent our nation. People in the United States see these symbols or icons and immediately think of the United States of America. People around the world know some of these icons and think of the United States of America when they see them. Our flag, the Statue of Liberty, the Bald Eagle, and the Liberty Bell. This page is what we're going to glue in next. This is the last page that we're gluing in for today. On the back, with a marker, make that big rectangle, and then the big X. I'm going to roll just a little bit of glue up, and then I'm going around that rectangle, the big X in the middle, closing my glue stick down. Snap cap, so I know it doesn't dry out. And then I'm taking that page and putting it in my book. And then rubbing it while I slowly count to 10. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then, of course, I need to number this page at the bottom. I'm writing numeral six and then circling it so we can show that. And we'll just name the symbols now that we all have the same paper ready. United States flag. Statue of Liberty, Bald Eagle, and Liberty Bell. And just as a double check, please don't go ahead in our books, in either the reading book, which we'll do next, our nation book, or our passport for my world and I. Please don't go ahead and, and write or color in the books. The teachers all have lessons planned, and we'll be giving you information and tasks a little bit at a time. So on this page, please don't color anything yet. We'll tell you when. The same as on this page. Please only color the parts and the directions that we give you. And on these pages and on the map at the beginning. The teachers all have set lessons of what and when and how to work on those pages. So please just stay with us, but please don't go ahead. Okay, I'm going to close this book for now and take out this book, which you got with your materials before. For each of the... Um, sorry, this one? Yes. Next up, we have two, two books coming out. It's called This is North America. This is... Um, one of the books in the series that I've written for all of the kindergarten classes that talks about um, our nation. And so this one is called This is North America, and this is what's going with the I Know My Nation book. There's another one that happens with the uh, North America for My World and I. 
So this is the book we're going to need next. Um, each week from now on, for the next while, the teachers will do one page in the book. These are books that I wrote. It's called, the name of this book is This is North America by Kevin G. Gallagher. That's this Kevin G. Gallagher. Because I wanted us to have books that are directly connected to the work that the teachers are teaching in the Nation series and the World series. So I wrote the books. <clears throat> I got artwork from the internet that was copyright free and able to be used. And then I wrote the books that helps teach and reinforce the work and the ideas that we're teaching in class. Now on the pages, on purpose, I also left space. The lines are places where you are going to help me write the book. You're going to write words that finish the thoughts and the sentences in the books on the pages that each teacher tells you. Again, please don't go ahead. And I left out specifically words that we are studying in class, in the kindergarten reading and writing words. And so <clears throat> let's come to the front cover. And please read the front cover with me. This is North America by Kevin G. Gallagher. They're right there on the front cover. Please get a red crayon. Because I put a kindergarten word on the front cover in the title of the book. If you think you can find which word that is, please point to it. Yep, right there, that one. This is North America. And what, we'll, what we will be doing as we find the kindergarten words we've been teaching, very often in our work, teachers will tell you when, to underline the word. And I'm going to ask you to underline that word right now with the red crayon. Similarly, please don't go ahead and underline words ahead unless a teacher tells you to, because we have a plan on how, what, and when we're having you find the words that you know or that we have taught we will teach. This is North America by Kevin G. Gallagher. Okay, now let's take a look at page one. Page one, <clears throat> if you open the book, there's a page one here, and page one and page two. Today we're just going to look at page one. <clears throat> it shows a map of the Western Hemisphere. That's the half of the world that includes North America and South America. And in this book, what I chose to do is to have our world be seen big and then come small. And so, let me get my pages ready here. That, so we see where our nation, our city, our state fit in the entire world. So this is a world map here. I, hmm, North America. There's a word missing. I, hmm, North America. It, hmm, one of seven continents on our earth. That's page one. Let's do a couple of things first on this page. Number one, please get a dark marker and let's put a compass rose on this paper. Ready? Let's do it as we did before. The space over here, I think I'll do it in this spot. Would you make a medium line, like that, near the top? And the letter that goes at the top of that line, pointing to the north, is the letter, yep, so you got it, is the letter N. The opposite of north is south, and that's the letter S, you got it. North, south, mm. and mm. let's make that sideways line, horizontal line, so it looks like a big plus symbol. North, south, east, that is the, yes, got it, that's the letter E. East, north, south, east, mm. got it, W for west. North, south, east, west. That's the compass rose for this part. Now, I'll ask you to take, get a blue crayon and 